It's aviation's final frontier. <laughs> Cowboy pilots who deliver small used aircraft. Thing not working. Freaking A, man. Across distances they were never meant to fly. This is the most extreme type of flying you can do. Slow down. There's a right way to fly an airplane, and there's a wrong way. Out here, there are no guarantees. I can't see anything, nothing. Every plane I fly in, I expect is trying to kill me. And no time for fair weather flyers. <laughs> but as long as there's money and fuel to burn, Let's roll. they'll do whatever it takes. Seriously, this could be really bad. To get it there. A lot of black out there, Capitan. Black is the color of trouble for pilots Corey Benson and Randy McGee. Well, with no moon and a bunch of clouds, we're not going to be able to see much. Well, we really don't want to be here right now. This is not uh, where we want to be at all. Corey and Randy have been driving full bore for weeks. Oh, my. Exhausted, they pushed off again, leaving Florida in a Beechcraft Bonanza bound for Brazil. Then, a strict airport rule about landing after sundown Damn it. left them in limbo above the Caribbean. We're climbing out of there. We're going to Grenada. Now, dead tired, they face another hour in the air, and their daylight is done. Or a single engine airplane with no visual reference at night over the ocean going into an unfamiliar airport with a controller that we can barely understand his accent. Whiskey Echo, request position. 901 Whiskey Echo is nine, eight miles out from the GND Gulf November Delta v In the dark, they're forced to rely completely on their instruments. Look out there. All you can see is black. There are no lights. There's no horizon. There's nothing. I mean, it's sensory deprivation right now. Even with instruments to help guide them, with no horizon line to refer to, a pilot can be tricked by how his body feels. We have no sense of movement. We have no sense of space. We have no sense of altitude. It's just not a real comfortable feeling, you know? There's a lot of pilots that have died just because of that. They feel like they're in a turn or in a climb or a descent when the plane's actually going straight, so they'll bank into something where they shouldn't, and they end up crashing. There's a lot of black, there's a lot of water, not a lot of options. And on the island of Grenada, where they're about to land, the options aren't great either. We got a lot of things stacked against us. We're surrounded by 3,000 foot mountains in all directions. Bottom line, there's no messing around on this and there's no margin for error. I might ask for information. I need you to really be focused for me. Roger that, Captain. You let your guard down for a minute and it's fatal. Where are we in sight? Uh, 9-1 Whiskey Echo. Ready to put this plane on the ground. Hang on, fellas. Welcome to Granada, boys. Well done, Capitan. <laughs> Holy I seriously thought that was going to be the easiest leg of our entire trip. I certainly hope we don't have anything that risky again, you know? Dude, you, you rocked on that approach. If I was with some of my other buddies, I would have been really fast. Well, I couldn't have done it without you, so. We did it, though. Good job, man. Fourteen time zones away. It's a new day, and a whole new world 
for ferry pilot Carrie McCauley. Nice. This is a sexy looking jet. I can't wait to fly it. This is the Phenom 100, a highly computerized executive jet with a three and a half million dollar price tag. Very cool. It's aviation's next generation, and Carrie's playing catch up. Been ferry flying uh, for quite a while now, since 1989. And it, it's kind of hard to uh, get up to speed with some of the new stuff. You know, you get comfortable with old technology. Let's uh, get the power back though. We're doing 110 now. A veteran seat of the pants pro, Carrie's like a race car driver. He prefers his ride hands on. Now, this is why I ferry fly. Who else gets a chance to do this? Woo -hoo. <laughs> Woo. That was cool. In the cockpit of a propeller plane, Carrie is king. Watch your speed. But on this trip, Carrie's the one taking orders. Oh, my goodness. What are the odds? There are two phenoms in Australia. I flew both of them here, and they're one behind each other. The phenom master is pilot Marcio Lucchese. It has its computers to do a lot of things, but the primary flight controls are mechanical. Marcio has flown around a dozen of these birds for Jet Aviva, a high-end delivery firm. But when it comes to jets, Carrie's a virgin. First time flying a jet, first time flying with Marcio or even meeting Marcio. So we're all ready to go. And first time being a co-pilot in almost a quarter of a century, <laughs> 25 years since I haven't been the one what's in charge. Oh, yeah. That is back. Now, together, they're taking this plane on a 14-stop run to Las Vegas. OK, now we're going to find out if she's healthy or not. Wow, this is, this is cool. It's like space shuttle. Yeah, you can use. There's nothing more modern than this. Everything is automatic. There's always a computer behind it. Yeah, good. The whole plane is really kind of a flying computer. It's going to take me two days to study the manual just to figure out how to turn the damn thing on. So let's start this bad boy, see what she really? says. Initializing system. Tall system failure. Tall system failure. That's not good. Tall system bad. failure. We're, we're, big, we're in trouble here. Cause system failure. In Carrie's world, when the plane won't start, he calls for a mechanic. Cause system failure. Marcio, he calls tech support. I have the cast box with a big red X on it. So what do I do? How do I cancel the damn, you know, there's an there's alarm here going dang, dang, dang. He's, he's spitting out words like, updates and multifunctioning displays. But if the computer's not working, nothing's working. Let's do that. Let's call, call these people. In the Caribbean, Carrie's boss is working overtime. If everything goes as planned, we should be in Manaus uh, early afternoon. Good morning, sir. Corey has just one thing on his mind right now, his schedule. He and Randy have logged more than 2,700 kilometers from Florida across the Caribbean. From here, they'll zigzag down Brazil to their final stop. Dude, I'm pumped to actually get into Brazil. We've had some long days, short nights, and we're tired. Corey's got Randy on a short leash. Fast turnarounds, no downtime. I mean, we're just we're too tired, we're too beat up, it's too hot. That fatigue's going to catch up with us, man. Today, Corey and Randy have to cover nearly 1,800 kilometers, most of it over dense Brazilian jungle. Run into trouble here, and it's a guaranteed crash landing with lousy odds of survival. There's no wires. There's no roads. There's no tracks of any kind. It's just a bunch of jungle down there. They need to stay sharp. <laughs> <laughs> but fatigue is now in full flight. It's like Beavis and Butthead <laughs> flying the most dangerous missions in the world. <laughs> All we can talk about is... <laughs> 
six or eight year old humor type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to call it, right? <laughs> Jumping time zones, being at altitude. If you're tired, you're physically drained, you can make a stupid decision. And you're dead because of it. Yeah, tomorrow might be a good day for a rest day, man, because we're totally losing it here. What tank are we on now? I don't know. Left, I think. They need to pull it together. Ahead of them. 3,300 kilometers across some of the most unforgiving terrain on the planet. Man, I'm tired, man. I'm hurt. Me too. This has been a long few days. Corey and Randy are out of steam, and now they're also running out of clear skies. Corey, those things are at least 30,000 feet. Look at that thing, man. All this stuff's got to be right in the middle of our path. Detouring around these storms is eating up time. They have the fuel for it. What they're low on is daylight. The biggest hazard is just the sun going down, us not making our destination in time, and then uh, not being able to see. Near the equator, the sun drops fast. And having tangled with the dark once already on this trip, might have been a mistake. Randy's not anxious for a repeat. There's a term in aviation called get homeitis. A lot of accidents have happened because people don't want to take the extra time to wait or turn around. I mean, the last two trips, we keep pushing it into the evening and night. The you know, sun is setting uh, pretty fast, but got to get this plane down there. They're within spitting distance of their destination but they've lost their race with the sun. Well, there's Manaus. I see her. Manaus, uh, 91 Whiskey Echo. Uh, can we start a descent, please? I'm in a 91 Whiskey Echo. Clear down 1,500 feet. Thank you, sir. We're cleared down to 1,500 feet, uh, 91 Whiskey Echo. OK, we're tired. Make sure we get to the right runway. Don't do anything stupid. For the second time in as many days, Randy's instruments are his only lifeline. All right, I'm fast and high. Come on, Randy, better than that. Damn it. There's an arrival. <laughs> They're now within a day of their final destination. I'm just glad to be out of the tight uh, quarters there and just trying to get loosened up. A little tired, but uh, it never stops, so. Declaration. Yes, Massapod. We've uh, pushed it too hard, too long already. Start talking seriously about uh, taking tomorrow off. Corey's silence is loud and clear. To him, a day off is just another delay, one his business can't afford. The Phenom 100 is sometimes called a mini airliner, an upscale ride with a computer at its core. And right now, that's the problem. It's three main computers that are missing a software update. So they're not talking. Let's see if we can format that. I don't know how to do that. The solution? A simple download. For Carrie, not so simple. Uh, my wife is really good with computers, so I have been really lacking in my computer knowledge and learning because I just say, honey, make it work, and she does. I don't even have words to describe how this little thing here can ground a $4 million jet. All right, here it is. Let's see if, uh, if she likes it. A few minutes ago, the jet wouldn't boot up. Turns out the software update Good, I think. Pause system test. OK. Is the magic touch. She's healthy, Thanks, puppy. Man. Yeah, man. Who's your daddy? <laughs> you miss your daddy, didn't you? That is back. 
The Phenom and her crew of two are finally good to go. If you have uh, any religious belief, this is the time to talk to your Lord and say, hey, here, Lord, please don't let me screw up. If I blow this flight, I'll have a real hard time getting any jet job in the US because the jet community is pretty small, and my name will mean mud out there. Carrie has manhandled prop planes for decades, but he's never flown a jet. Banks on ground, 777 Bravo Fox, right, ready to copy, Glenn. 777 Bravo Fox, shot, you'll clear for takeoff. And the Phenom 100 isn't just any jet. Takeoff, okay. 4067, good day. Pilots call it a flying computer. Carrie's more of a typewriter guy. It's a big jump. Is it puppy? Let's go. Good man. If you are not a good pilot and someone asks me, is this guy a good pilot? I will tell them the truth. And you would be amazed how many careers or jobs that I had to end because of my honesty. He's probably got some high expectations because I talk a big game, got a lot of experience. So it's time to put up or shut up. And I hate shutting up. Kerry will have to hold his tongue for a good long time. The trip, Sydney, Australia, to Las Vegas, USA. A commercial airliner makes the run in under 17 hours. But the Phenom was built for shorter hauls, 2,200 kilometers at the most. So for this trip, it's globe trotting Across the Australian outback, up over Indonesia, Asia, Russia, then dropping down into the United States. More than 19,000 kilometers and 14 stops in six days. We're taking this jet right to the edge. And when I say right to the edge, it's right to the edge. In the plane delivery business, a day off is as rare as a problem-free flight. But after days of demanding it, Randy's finally got his R&R. All right, thanks, man. This is awesome. Flying is inherently dangerous and it's difficult. But there comes a point where I've got to just put my foot down and make that call. This morning, I was pretty pissed that we weren't flying. I wanted to get the plane down there, but this is amazing. Back here for Ben. Yeah. Look at that kid. Did you get that kid jumping off? Oh. Come on. Let's see it. Here we go. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Woo. <laughs> so these are the fish that will pull you down to the bottom, huh? Jeez, that thing is strong. Did you see how big that thing was? Oh, Randy, look at this one. Oh. <laughs> this is much better than being in a small, cramped cockpit with no food or water in 120 oh, degrees. I'm glad you talked me into staying. This is amazing. And Randy made a good call by, by just relaxing for the day and, and turn around and look at this. When's the next time I'm going to be here? This is awesome. <laughs> but Corey and Randy are about to be reminded Awesome comes at a price. The next day is delivery day for the Beechcraft Bonanza. But Corey Benson and Randy McGee haven't even left the ground, and already they're in a holding pattern. Hey, dude, I need some cash to pay the handler and landing fee and all the customs. Man, we're running light. We got six, forty dollars after this. Dude, they just don't. None of these places take credit cards. It's crazy. We're not even halfway through the trip yet. Their 24-hour vacation has left Corey and Randy cash-strapped. What does this say? And most of the bank machines appear to be taking their own day off. I went through uh, eight machines and two banks, and I couldn't get any money out. I've got about 700 Brazil. So it's about 500 bucks right now.
Corey and Randy need around $2,000 to cover the airport fees and fuel costs. If we can't get the money, uh, we're not going anywhere. An ocean away. The techno jet they call the Phenom is living up to the name. Keep us up. The Phenom can climb as high as a commercial jet and reach speeds almost as fast. Yeah, you have to watch it, okay, when you put a, a departure stuff. Just make sure that it's properly sequenced. For a prop plane guy like Kerry McCauley, it's like being strapped into a guided missile. I'm kind of feeling like a dummy in this plane. You know, I'm, it's like a caveman trying to figure out the, the Concorde. Kerry and Marcio blast across the Australian outback, veering up toward Indonesia. Marcio, I'd, I'd like you to meet somebody. Okay. I'm a superstitious guy, but what I'd like you to meet is Hula Girl. I got her when I first started ferry flying and with me ever since. It's my good luck charm. Hula Girl has more than luck going for her. What the hell is that? Uh, Corey, meet Hula Girl. She's a coconut-clad icebreaker. On a recent flight to Brazil, tension was brewing between Carrie and Corey. Pretty interesting there, buddy. Yeah, well, you got to have somebody to talk to on the long flights. <laughs> One look at Hula Girl, the turbulence in the cockpit disappeared. Hopefully she'll bring us good luck on this leg. She's not alone. Yeah. Let me introduce you to my friend Jack. <laughs> Jack is not uh, really a superstition or anything like this. It's just uh, he's just covering my behind because his behind is full of instructions for me. So don't forget the permits. Don't forget the gear pins, the chocks, the hotel, the fuel key. Every time before I go, you know, I take a moment to just uh, grab Jack and say, Jack, what's up? That's awesome. <laughs> Thought I was the only crazy one. No, man, there are weird people everywhere, man. Carrie's a veteran pilot, but he's brand new to jets. And on this trip, it's not just the technology he's learning about. Stay tuned. <laughs> Marcio is also teaching them some new tricks for their stop in Indonesia. Indonesia really loves football, and uh, they're big fans of uh, Brazil for the soccer. And we do not have any handlers, any support, anybody there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wear my Brazilian soccer jersey. Maybe I can make some friends. <laughs> it's Ronaldo! Oh, my god! <laughs> That's awesome. It's also a plan to save money at the next stop. Marcio's not paying for ground crew. He's counting on a yellow shirt and a lot of charm to get him what he needs. All right, so here's the story. Just you and I. So uh, we have one chance to make a good impression. You know, try to uh, let me do the talking, I would say. You know? This is Terminal Information for Samratulangi International. Hydro contact tower on 118, clear from the visual for 36, Bravo Foxtrot. All right, Indonesia. <laughs> so uh, this should be it. I'm not just a pilot, uh, I'm a flight department. How are you? I'm Captain Lucchese, OK? Oh, we're going, okay. We, 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 got, we came from the little jet, so I need to file the flight plans. Uh, I'm a dispatcher, I'm a flight planner, I'm a hotel reservations, I'm a maintenance coordinator, I do everything. Huh. Your friend Ronaldo? Yeah, my friend Ronaldo. <laughs> oh, that's my friend. Yeah, my friend. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know my Ronaldo. <laughs> he, gave, he gave me a shirt. The jersey works its magic with the flight planners and the fuel guys. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you. What, what do we have to do? Well, now yeah. I'm here. But at his final call, where he's looking for an exit stamp, Immigration officials don't see a yellow T-shirt. They see a red flag. I'm worried about the permit. I'm worried about the paper. Well, we didn't show up with the actual paper copy of our 
permit, problem one. Problem two is these guys seem to really wanted us to hire a handler. So on the immigration side, what do we have to do now then to clear? My role, your problem like this, to investigation for you. Investigation? This is a bad place for a pilot. We call the airport authority. Do I need to hire a handler? They said no. The interrogation room of an Indonesian immigration department. Wait for the big boss, and he's going to be the one that decides what the appropriate punishment is for us. I mean, it could seriously be jail. When he opened a rule book, said, oh, this is bad news. It seems failing to bring proper paperwork and cheaping out on ground crew is a serious offense. I have to hire ground handling services. Uh, yeah, like this. But when the head honcho arrives, 620. It's nothing that a few greenbacks can't solve. Thank you so much, OK? We'll see you next time. Have a good dinner tonight, OK? Carrie and Marcio are free to go. There are two friends that always give me out of trouble. One is Ronaldo. The other one is Ben Franklin. <laughs> Halfway around the world. You got one to work. You got some. You got... Randy and Corey are saddled with big airport fees and empty wallets. I'm not the most patient person, and so these delays drive me nuts. OK, <laughs> we just landed. It's a beautiful weather. But they just ran into a little luck, and his name is Joey. Oh, did you pay already the lint fee here? No. No? I feel Joey gets what Corey and Randy are up against. Over there is going to be like 400 miles, let's say three hours. Let's say three hours. Because he's one of them. He's also a ferry pilot from the States and has done this route a lot. We need money to get out of here. Uh, let's see how much I have, but I can help you out, for sure. I can borrow you money. You give me now, later. Or the bus back on the American here. Do you have a It's kind of like a fraternity, because there's only a very select few of us that do it, that have the, the guts to do it. And so we respect that about each other, and, and we'll do anything we can to help each other out. Thanks, buddy. Let's go. That took way too long. When we got here, we had nice, clear skies, and now all quadrants, we got building thunderstorms. If we don't get out of here soon, we're not going. Let's go. Corey and Randy are in the final stretch. It's 1,500 kilometers to the finish line. And like any other marathon, those last miles can be a killer. Look at that, man. Storm, 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 storm. Huge storm. You see that thing? I can't even estimate how many miles wide that thing is. Randy's an old hand at dodging storm clouds he can see. But electricity is invisible and travels for miles. That's the airport. Getting all those lightning strikes. This lightning scope detects electricity in the air, not picked up by regular radar. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And the picture is grim. We got about 17 lightning strikes right over the airport right now, so we just made it out. Here we go. One, four, zero, two deviation due to weather, sir. You yeah, have to left. any left. deviation either. We don't want to get okay, anywhere near the high stuff. And, uh, head in one. This prop kicking with all this moisture in the air, we're just generating negative ionization right now. We're just asking to get hit. Though modern aircraft are mostly built to take it, lightning can still punch a plane out of the sky. It can damage the frame and wiring, shatter a windshield, or spark an explosion. One of the worst times I ever had in an airplane was in an airliner and we took a massive lightning strike, and we almost didn't make that. If this plane got hit, I guarantee we'd never make it down. For Carrie and Marcio, it's been smooth sailing. A whole lot around, hey. Oh, no, a whole, whole lot of deep. 
They've put more than 7,000 kilometers behind them in three days and are now zeroing in on Russia. That part of Russia was the primary point of attacking the United States during the Cold War. Take a look at that, a supersonic one. Yeah, that's cool. You see the runways and you see the security. It brings you back in time. So wow, this Cold War, this was not a joke. The runways left over from the Cold War aren't very funny either. An Airbus lurches down the tarmac. He's shaking like a little girl because the road is too bad. X-ray is so f***ed up that he cannot uh, exit fast enough. Are you ready for departure from Festival Charlie or Festival Mike? After a quick refuel, it's Carrie and Marcio's turn to taxi for takeoff. Takeoff, oh. okay. It's like heading off-road. Oh, well, this taxiway is beat up. Been on smoother gravel roads. I do things stupidly in Mother Russia. It's just a, a stone about this big hits your tire and whoop, flies right into your engine. You just got yourself a million dollar bill. The runway rocks miss the engine. She's on GPS doing the departure. But they may have hit something else. Cabin. Hello? Cabin. 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 Stop the climb. Stop the climb right here. Moments after leaving a Russian runway. Autopilot. Level off. Carrie and Marcio are in a full-blown emergency. Uh, we've lost authorization. Autopilot. OK, tell that we need to maintain altitude right now. Slow down. The jet is losing cabin pressure. Autopilot. They need to stop their climb to keep from losing consciousness. But there's an Airbus closing in fast, and the control tower wants them out of the way. November 7, 7, 7, uh, Fox climb initially 9,100 meters. You are being followed by uh, Airbus 330, 10 miles behind. Just forget about him. I fly the plane for me, please. Maintain altitude and fix the ship. Carrie's a prop pilot flying his first ever jet, and this is trial by fire. Uh, negative. We have a pressurization problem right now. We need to hold altitude for a minute. We'll advise. Uh, Fox, what's the problem? Uh, we have a pressurization problem. I'll get back to you in just a minute. Slow, 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 slow. 200 knots, 200 knots, 200 knots. While Carrie controls the jet, Marcio tries to troubleshoot. Slow, down. Slow, down. What level do you need? 1,800 meters. Put your oxygen mask on. Come on. Under pressure, Carey's fallen back on his old skills, flying the plane by hand. Autopilot on. Autopilot on. Autopilot. Autopilot. The computerized plane is back on autopilot. Autopilot. But Carey's got it on the wrong setting. He quickly corrects. Autopilot. But in the confusion, he autopilot. loses track of his airspeed. Stall. 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 Stall, 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 stall. Autopilot. Marcio has no choice but to take back the controls. He powers the plane out of the potentially deadly stall. Are you okay? Yes. Pay attention, okay? What the hell was that? Oh, you forgot to look at its speed? It's I don't know. That's what happened. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, there you go. Easy does it, easy does it, puppy, easy. There we go, that's better. Easy. I screwed up. I've never flown anything like that before. I barely know how to shut the door on the thing, so I've got a little bit of catching up to do. For now, Marcio rides the cabin pressure by hand. Hey, coming to flaps three, okay. Carrie takes over the landing. Very nice, very nice. If Marcio seems unfazed by all the drama, 
it's because he's pretty sure he knows what's causing the cabin pressure problem. Oh, I know what happened now. He'll soon know if he's right. In the southern hemisphere, Corey and Randy are navigating a minefield of thunderstorms above Brazil. This plane cannot handle anything that storm's going to dish out, so we want to give it a wide margin. Concentration of vultures from final approach. Vultures, vultures, vultures. Turn right. There you go. <laughs> I couldn't make this stuff up, man. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Freaking vultures, thunderstorms. <laughs> this trip's tossed a lot of bad stuff their way. They've flown bone tired and been tricked by nighttime illusions. They've had no place to land and been cleaned out of cash. In this racket, a game plan is just a suggestion. We have an approach, uh, good afternoon, November 9-1, Whiskey Echo 080. Five days and more than 6,000 kilometers after leaving Florida, their final destination of Cuiabá, Brazil, is in sight. Every time we turned around, our plans had to change. We did it! It was just nonstop action the whole way down. Whew. We finally made it. And the one person as happy as they are about that all right, congratulations. Is the Bonanza's owner. <laughs> the new owner's ecstatic about his airplane. All right. Happy new owner. She's all yours now. <laughs> He's excited and he's kind of giddy walking around his new airplane and getting to hand the keys to him. And it's just like a huge weight's been off my back. Uh, but I'm ready to do it again. Next time, we got to bring a ton more cash. On a concrete Russian slab, Carrie and Marcio have one temperamental jet and an even bigger problem. The Phenom 100 is cutting edge. The mechanics, not so much. I'm here in remotest Russia. And these guys are, all their aircraft are bailing wire and two by fours. I mean, they're built to last, they're tough, but they're not, uh, they're not flying computers. But Marcio knows his way around this fancy Phenom. He's flown several of them and he has a theory about this one. I want to make sure there's no, no loose wire. Oh, it's right up here. See, it's right up here. This wire is connected to a sensor that automatically adjusts cabin pressure. So it might be bouncing so much that it's just uh, giving wrong signals to the computer. Marcio suspects the rough Russian runway shook it loose on takeoff. I'm not too concerned about it. On the taxiway in, you know, the message disappears, so. Also funny enough, a lot of the Russian-made airplanes, they have huge tires. And we're asking, why do they have huge tires? Now we know. Now we know. There's a, a sensor there for pressurization. But taxiway in Russia. So sensor. After briefing the mechanics, Marcio and Carrie turn their attention to their next and most dangerous destination, Russia's Far East. The weather. Weather. Tomorrow with the hero. And the Russian weather lady doesn't sugarcoat the situation. Uh -oh. One kilometer visibility. It's not much. Showers, snow, and rain. OK, mist. From the late autumn till the spring, late spring, it is bad. It is often, almost constantly bad.
in the world of fairy flying, playing the odds is part of the game. Well, we're gonna give it a shot. Carrie and Marcio are taking a chance on the weather. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Visibility, one zero kilometers. Broken, one five zero zero. They're coming up. There's 500 feet. Autopilot. Right, this is a remote area. I bet nobody's been over a mess of this stuff for a really long time. The Phenom has now soared across 8,700 kilometers and is arcing into the Russian Far East. Weather report just took a big turn for the worse. It was, okay, last one we had was overcast at 200 meters. It's now went to overcast at 120 meters. It got pretty bad in 20 minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes, huh? November 7, 7, 7, Bravo, overcast at uh, 9 zero. Now we're down to 90, which is 295 feet. It's pretty low. It's getting there. The airport they're headed to is now almost completely socked in. And the trend is up. We got about a. We gotta go somewhere else. This is not gonna work. They veer to another airport. Then. Uh, November, Bravo Fox, confirmation. Airdrome, uniform, hotel, Mike, Papa, is closed. That's just great. They just closed the airport. Nice. I wonder what to do, man. What do you think? Ah. They don't want to turn around. If we decide to go, should we go faster and get there before it gets any worse? It's back to plan A. Reroute to the original airport and hope the weather clears by the time they get there. Two hours later, they're closing in on their destination. There's a big mountain we don't want to hit. Look at the way that the clouds are separated by it. It's not just terrain that's trouble. And uh, arrive on November 2nd, Bravo Fox Charger. Can you please request uh, light, uh, full bright, light, full bright at the airport, please? Uh, light uh, in operation. Say. No light? No, no light. Doesn't help much, does it? No, oh, that's not good. Oh, There's not enough fuel to turn around. With night falling and lousy visibility, they've got to pick their way to the unlit airstrip. To make this first one count. They drop into the soup that hangs low over the runway. 777 Bravo Foxtrot, you appear to land surface wind 300 degrees, 6 meters. To the airport. Negative. November 777 Bravo Foxtrot in the Maca. Then, just 90 meters above the runway, Lights. Okay. Path, light. yep. The runway lights suddenly blast back to life. 160 feet over actual runway now. Got it. You're good. Are we going to live today? I think so. Oh, the beer is going to taste so good. Flaps coming to zero. November 777 Bravo Foxtrot on ground at 46. Back track runway 01. This would have been a real bitch without any lights. Can I start breathing now? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, man. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, was the issue ever in doubt? Maybe a little. <laughs> But a flight's not over until the keys are in the hands of the owner. And that's in Las Vegas, more than 5,300 kilometers away. Next time on Dangerous Flights. We need you out here. Corey's chance to turn a fast buck turns to bad luck. And that trim is a little fucking Yes, it is. When an old plane comes with a full-blown attitude. We got things freezing up. We got nuts and bolts freezing up. And the guy who loves to fly by hand 
has his hands full. 